Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel, and in this video, uh, we will see uh, what are the course content for this playlist. Again, guys, I'll try to put uh, uh, all the things that you know comes to my mind now, but I can add you know few extra topics while because uh, you know while making the playlist, I can I can think about some new topics and then I can add them as well. So this is not the final list. Okay, in the vi previous video, we have seen uh, you know how to do an assignment with with a, you know without using all the functional programming uh, in Java, and we also see how we can leverage functional programming with the with the, with the you know way of stream and how we can you know write a clean code, right? So if you haven't watched the video, please do watch that. I have made that video just to make sure that you guys get interest towards uh, functional programming in Java, all right? Unless we know what we are going to achieve it is very difficult for us to imagine and then uh, you know you know we will lose our interest in the midway so whenever you feel that you are losing the interest check the first video and uh, make sure that you know it will help you as to write a better readable code right good so you know in terms of course content for this playlist you know we're going to learn about stream api this is one of the important inclusion in the java 8 Right, and we also going to learn about method references. That that's going to be really really handy. And we also learn about constructor references. Right, and to all these things, if you want to work with all these things, you need to have a good understanding on the functional interfaces. When I mean functional interfaces, it is your single abstract method interface. Again, we will dive deep into that, and uh, you know we will take a lot of examples and we'll try to understand them in detail but without the you know understanding what is functional interface it is very difficult for us to work with all these uh, top three right good so if you want to work with functional interfaces uh, java has in by default created certain interfaces functional interfaces for us some of them which are widely used is you know consumer interface your predicate your functional interface your supplier interface and also their by types when i mean by types it's like by consumer by predicate by function and then we don't have something called as by supplier i'll also explain the reason when we are you know going through that in detail uh, for now just imagine we have a uh, certain functional interfaces that we want to learn about uh, you know while we want to work with uh, java 8 right so there are other primitive functional interfaces as well in java that might be also handy in test automation i mean guys i'm not gonna just teach all these things i'm also gonna apply them in test automation world and how we can leverage them in our day-to-day -day life right that's very important right coach if you want to know all these things right if you want to even understand about uh, functional interfaces, you know, uh, or your, if you want to work with stream, your method references and all other stuff, you also need to have a very good understanding on the Lambda expressions. Okay, that is very, very important. So if you want to also work with uh, Lambda expressions, you also need to have a good understanding on the inner classes, anonymous inner class, right? So I'll also cover that in detail. Again, guys, this is not the complete list. This is not the complete set of uh, functional interfaces in Java. If I go to the official documentation, okay, their Java docs, it's inside the java.util.function package. Okay, if I go inside this, you know, in this particular package, we have a lot of functional interfaces, right? So almost, you know, 30 to 40 functional interfaces, which, you know, where each one does a different job, right? Though it is impossible for us to cover all of them, but I, I'm sure that, you know, after I explain some of them, you would be in a position to reuse other stuff, right? So most importantly, we need to try to utilize them in our day-to-day -day life in test automation world, right? So, so what are the biggest benefits that we're going to achieve with the help of Java 8 and functional programming? So if you ask that question to me, we are not going to achieve something that is uh, out of box, okay? So we cannot tell, I cannot do this in Java 7, but I can do this in Java 8. That There is no such thing. Everything that you can do in Java 7, uh, you know, Java 8 is possible in Java 7 as well. The only difference is we have to do it in the object-oriented programming way. But in Java 8, we can do that in functional programming. So that is the only difference, okay? But so you know it, it indicates we are not achieving something you know anything new only thing that we're going to do is we're going to write a clean and more readable code what is the benefit of writing a clean and readable code right so it reduces the probability of making errors right it's it's very common if you are creating multiple interfaces multiple classes multiple class definitions you know it is there is a probability that we can make mistakes right 
to avoid that you know this functional interfaces and you know the functional way of programming can help us to avoid those mistakes right we will see that in detail in the upcoming sessions most importantly we're going to remove all the unnecessary codes right uh, unnecessary syntaxes uh, we're going to use something called as type inferences java compiler will do that right so it will help us to avoid uh, you know your boilerplate codes when i mean boilerplate codes it's your you know un, uh, you know un, is you know unnecessary codes right so when we remove the unnecessary codes we're going to obviously write less code again guys this is not always true okay but make sure the only benefit that we are going to get out of this is your clean readable code and it's going to make your uh, you know probability of making errors to you know to the minimal level possible good and if we have something called as parallel stream with that we can also enable parallel processing which can you know decrease the time it consumes to do a certain process right so we will you know if if you, i'm sure you guys might not be you know understanding what i'm speaking now but guys believe me uh, you know we're going to learn everything in detail and you're going to re really enjoy the series so please keep watching this uh, you know this playlist uh, for more details and if you like the channel uh, content you know please do share with your friend like and share with your friends as well right i will all see you in another great video where i'll be speaking about anonymous inner class until then tata bye bye from amudan bye guys